Welcome to this XGW Radio CAW Draft Special. I am Hector Diaz here with Joshua covering the CAW Draft. It's it's right around the corner. Mm-hmm. And Joshua, a couple of opening thoughts here before we go through through the couple of topics here. I guess you want to give everybody an update on uh, XGWL and where we're standing on with this. Oh, right now, the update on the hiatus of XGWL, I mean, this whole thing, I'm not sure what to call I mean, a couple of, to break the fourth wall here a little bit, a couple of technical difficulties on the software end, so trying to get our IT people together, trying to fix this problem as soon as we... Problem. Actually, WL Charts episode number 84 right. will be up and about, leading up to Payton Full, then Global Warning. And in the meantime, while we're on the downside, I've actually taken over the uh, general manager role of TriStar Wrestling. I mean, it's just something, you know, we don't normally, I guess we don't normally break fourth wall, but I'm out of character, obviously. And so, you know, I took over the general manager, so you can see me every week on try to start wrestling until we get back on track with XGWL. And in the meantime, myself, Hector Diaz, and Joshua are available for commentary for other CAW leagues, Mm -hmm. so any other CAW league that wants our services and commentary, drop us a line and we'll be sure to to give you a a five-star commentary, guaranteed. That's exactly right. All right, All right, so getting on with this draft thing. You ready? Okay, here's what I what I'm, what I'm with this whole CEW draft. Right now, there's going to be four rounds with eight CEW leagues involved. That means that we're going to have 32 picks. And right now, uh, there's a couple of guys in mind that 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 may fit that number one overall pick, which is hard to hard to predict because there's a lot of great talent coming in. Year in and year out. I know 2010, Extreme Tony was was projecting Trey Steele to go number one overall, and that that honor went to the future le- legend Rick Acid and Trey Rick Steele. Was... <laughs> oh, there you go again with that. But but yeah, he did go number one overall to World CEW Wrestling, and and Trey Steele was drafted by XGW with the number two overall pick. But, I don't know how we wound up with Rick Astley, but I mean, hey. I wasn't anyways, <laughs> anyways. Well, here's my prediction for who's going to be drafted number one overall. I'm looking at this guy, and he certainly fits the bill. Cause, I mean, you know that that wrestling, whether it's real wrestling or CEW, there's always the big guy that always gets looked at first. That's like right. In, in pro football, they always look at offensive linemen to go number one overall, or, or at least in the top five pick. But, but this guy, Big Rig Mark Austin, number. I mean, I project him to be the number Big one Rig overall. Big Rig Mark draft. Austin, huh? Yeah, former Ooh. 18 wheel truck driver. I mean, seven feet tall, 290 um, pounds. I mean, I'm looking at him, ooh. and I mean, in you due time. Of- he can add another 20 pounds to his body frame and eventually can be a future so, world champion. He's a truck driver, correct? Yeah. So, he's a truck driver and he's drunk. <laughs> oh, come on now. Let's not go there. I well, don't that's think... what you just said. He's a truck driver and he's drunk. No, you, you added that one in. But... Oh, did I? Whoops. <laughs> Jeez. Well, who's your who's your projected number one overall pick? In this? Honestly, the guy I'm looking at right now, and I've been studying up a little bit on this one, is Wrecker. His height's six one, two hundred seventy one pounds, and he's from Houston, Texas. And he kind of reminds me, and I hate to break the fourth wall again, but he kind of reminds me of a wrestler named uh, Rhino. You know oh yes, heard I've him? heard of him. He is a pretty good wrestler, hardcore style. Good with the fisticuffs, but but I don't know if I if I see Wrecker as the number one overall draft pick. I I could I could easily see him at the bottom of the first round, early second round. Mm-hmm. Could be a pretty solid pickup, and if he falls down there, right, he could be. But I don't know. I mean, I mean differences of opinions. But and actually, you know what? Big Rig Drunk Austin 
Um, has the face of Shawn Michaels. Just, just saying. I don't know about that. But well, look at his face. I mean, analyze it here. I don't know, but I think we should move on. I think I think I'm looking at at the draft order. I guess you don't and, want to talk about drunks anymore. No. So, anyways, as we move on here, XGWO as the number five overall pick, number five in the draft order. There's a couple of guys that that if, if they fall to to that number five pick, I mean, there's obviously one guy that that's that XGW has to pick. I mean, I know Extreme Tony has been pretty much a genius at this CAW draft thing, but but if 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 he if he's still there at the number five overall pick, XGW must, and I mean absolutely must draft Keith Storms. Looking at this guy, six three, two hundred seventy nine pounds. Hawaiian, I mean, kind of reminds me of of Samoa Joe, but yeah, you and I were talking about this um, before we went on the air, and obviously, Keith Storms is definitely a guy that I'm rooting and hoping we get in the industry because honestly, I think he could go far in XGWL. And not too many Hawaiians in in the CEW world. No, actually. you don't see that too often. No. But I wouldn't be surprised if Keith Storms gets drafted number two overall. Well, uh, I mean, if we had to make a trade here, I think, honestly, we could get rid of Tammy and put Keith Storms in the uh, oh, XGWL. <laughs> now, why would you want to do that? Well, I mean, Tammy's obviously on a losing streak, you know, so why not? But you don't, you don't draft a, a, a falling commodity for... For that high of a draft, but you have to have something of equal or greater value to well, make that kind I, of a I trade. Mean, it's like you know, I'm saying here you could draft a hooker. Who wants her? Oh wow, wow! That I don't know what to say. How to follow up on that? You, that was honestly that was a knockout shot. Thank I, you. I'll, I'll applaud you for for once. Well, I'm just saying. I. I'm saying what everybody needs to say. What's been on everybody's mind? She's yes, a flat-out hooker. I'm sorry. Oh man, I don't know how Extreme Tony's gonna get it. Well, I'm to sure Extreme one. Tony will. I mean, you could look on the guy's face and automatically read he's thinking hooker. That's what he's thinking. Well, we all know I how mean, the I story. I say that about the boss, but Lord forgive me. I mean, you know, it's just. One thing, Tammy cheated with the title bit. I may have been a little wrong in saying she deserved it, but think about it. She created her own title and brought it in and sort of cheated. Yeah, that's what I've been saying. Yeah, it's, well, I'm it's not, for once agreeing with you. It's not a legitimate title. No. But no I think we are, but we are skewing off topic here. I mean, Aren't we anyway. always? Sometimes, yes, but... Anyway, you know, I was thinking about some of the strategies here for the CEW draft. Mm-hmm. I know in in the first CEW draft in 2010, XGWL traded up to to the number two overall draft pick to draft Trey Steele. And in last year's CEW draft, XGWL traded out of the first round and and accumulated stockpile draft picks. So, what would be a good strategy for XGWL in this year's draft? Honestly, given what you just said about last year's draft, uh, this year's draft, go for the big guys. Honestly. So what you're saying is that XGWL should should tr- trade up to the, maybe the number one or number two overall draft pick to... That's exactly what I'm saying. To, to draft one of Keith Storms, maybe? Mm-hmm. That, that's what I'm saying. Obviously, you know it as well as I know it. You want Keith Storms in there. Well, I know that talking to Extreme Tony on occasion about the draft, I know they're looking to to trade out of the first round or, or maybe trading down now that there's eight CW leagues involved in it, maybe trade down to the number seven or number eight slot mm-hmm. and get, get a second or third round draft pick. Or maybe even trading out of the first round altogether again and Maybe trading down with with ACW so they can 
grab a second and third round draft pick and maybe drafting another tag team. Yeah, exactly. I think we should definitely go for Key Storms and maybe go for a tag team or two. I mean, that sounds like a really good plan. What? 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 If XGW drafts trades out of the first round, I mean, Key Storms will be, is not going to be there at that point anymore. And XGW, they're going to have to draft a tag team because because XGW needs to to get their tag team division going again. I know um, Cash Money. Have has been a transitional tag team again, and and I mean I'm still liking you know, Team Deutschland, but with just because of their theme song. But I know there's a couple of new tag teams and a couple, and I'm hearing I don't know. I'm just I'm just speculating here at this point. Right. I mean, I just, yeah, we can speculate all day long, but honestly, we need to try to focus and maybe get key storms. I mean, just saying, you know. Yeah, that that would be a good strategy to trade up in this year's draft. There's still there's plenty of talent that that actually W could look at and, and and speaking of that, let's go into some of the, the different divisions. I know there's two tag teams in this year's draft. Last year there was only one tag team. So which of these two tag teams might be the better pair of draft picks? Uh, honestly, I really couldn't tell you. I mean, I know my choice will be the Blonde Bombshells. They look like a pretty up-and-coming tag team. These two, this team of rookies. I know the rule says for for the CEW draft to draft a tag team that a, the CEW league must trade to have consecutive picks together to draft a tag team. I know that's what XGWO did last year, then they drafted the Marvelous ones in last year's CEW draft. Yeah, I mean, the Blonde Bombshells, obviously, you know, that's good. A couple of the other CEW prospects that, that I'm seeing here on the list, you know, there aren't too many smallish guys. There's a lot of big guys, to be honest, and and the only Crusado that's on, on, on that list that catches my attention... Honestly, is is Martin Villalobo from mm-hmm. Guadalajara, Mexico, and I think he could fit very well in in XGWO because I know they want to get that Crucero division going again. It should be a pretty good pickup there. Are you saying cruiserweight or Crucero? Crucero. It's the same thing, but but basically we do need to XGWO does need to to get that division going again. I know he will be a good pick in in either in the later rounds, maybe Fair in the enough. third maybe Fair the enough. third round. And and now looking at the the females, the women's in in the you know, women prospects here. I'm looking at a female. Yeah. You know who it is? Who? We talked about this before, Kira Lee. Oh yes. Another good draft prospect. I Looks mean, like she eats very many egg rolls. Oh, oh wow. Really? I mean, really? Kira Lee, I mean, from She's Southern California. Some fried rice, if you ask me. Looking at her booty. Anyway. From Southern California. She's half Jamaican and half Korean. And she's, well, she can, oh, cre- she can create me up anytime. <laughs> wow. I'm just I don't know how to follow up on that one, but but there's a, some upside to her. But let's see how how she may do well. I know I know she will be a good pickup in the fourth round or or as a priority undrafted free agent. But I know there there may be a CEW league out there that may take a chance and draft her in the third round. Yeah, definitely. I mean, if she gets drafted to XGWL, honestly, I think she could give. Uh, the women run for their money. That could be a possibility. Maybe I, Tammy. <laughs> yeah, that that wouldn't be too hard. I mean, come on now, but but you could even give Tammy a run for her money. Oh, uh, <laughs> wow! <laughs> like I said many times, I'm not a wrestler. I'm just a commentator. We know, we know, we got it. That's the same thing your wife said last week in the audience. I mean, the week before. Sorry. 
That was so lame of you. Uh, thanks. I'll be right back. I gotta go grab something. Well, anyways, as as Joshua gra- is gonna uh, get a snack or something, let's go through some of the other draft picks. A couple of draft picks that have caught my attention. And, I mean, other than than that, I mean, this guy, other than than Wrecker, who who Joshua predicted to be go number one overall, and and Big Rig Mark Austin that I projected to go number one overall, Gray Davis from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, six feet tall, two hundred twenty six pounds. I mean, could be a solid second round draft pick for some CEW leagues out there. Monster Shaw, another big guy, could be a first round draft pick. I mean, we already mentioned a couple others. Here's a few more. Kenneth Griffin, 6'8", 283 pounds. I could see him go with another first round draft pick, but no surprise there because big guys go go early. And another woman here, Crystal Summers, 5'9", 129 pounds. I mean, it has a lot of upside potential here. There's a couple guys that just... I'm just scratching my head here. This first guy that comes to mind, is, his name is Butch Polbag. Butch Six- Polbag, huh? So he puts his bag on the pole, right? I I don't know how to how to respond to that because... Because I just came back, so anyway. No, because I just don't know how to respond to someone with that kind of a name. Butch but, Polbag. I wouldn't be surprised if he gets drafted in the second round. You know, I was actually looking at somebody. Um, yeah. I'm trying to think here. Not Butch Polbag, because honestly, I saw that and I started laughing, but... <laughs> no. Midnight. Yeah. With a name like that, you know... If it's either a female or a male, it's got to be cool. Well, it depends. We we have we don't have too many informa- too much information on some of these. There's a couple that have that were that went undrafted in last year's CAW mm-hmm. draft. Either that, or mm-hmm. they were drafted and and they were never signed to the CAW league. They were drafted too. Well, so. actually, there's something I do have to ask you about. Yeah, Groovy Molester. Oh. Don't get me started on this name. I mean, this guy with the name that like that alone, this sounds like a like a creep. I don't know how he's gonna do in the ring, but but I would highly recommend security be on him <laughs> when he comes to the ring. I'm and sorry, I don't mean to laugh, but Groovy Molester. It sounds like he molesting ain't the only thing he's doing. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, I hate to go out on a limb here again. It sounds like he's jacking off during his matches. Um, <laughs> I'm okay. sorry, I had to go there. And here's a, another one that 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 Have may. Have you ever heard the song "I Touch Myself"? I, oh honestly, hell! I think that will be his theme song. <laughs> or how about this one? I'm too sexy for my shirt. Oh wow! Come on, I mean, no you can just comment. make these jokes all day long about. No, oh. no comment. He does What's a little the... turn on the catwalk, if you know what I'm saying. I did not need a picture of that. Anyways, here's another draft prospect that that might, gra- that might grab your attention. Named Garrett Shetty, six foot seven, two hundred fifty-five so pounds. He shat Should... all over himself. I don't know about that, but. As a possibility that he did. Yeah, it is a possibility given his name. <laughs> this guy could be a late round draft pick. And actually, I hate to break the fourth wall here about Garrett Shetty or whatever his name is, but honestly, I me, mean, his name just doesn't sound too great. You know what I mean? <laughs> hey, no arguments from me. Hey, and going back to Butch Polbag, you know where Butch Polbag came from? No. WrestleMania 2000, that's right. I broke the fourth wall. And guess what else? You know, we're waiting on you in the future, Butch Polbag. I mean, you and Groovy Mo Lester, you guys are stuck on the 
N64 game. I mean, seriously. Oops, did I go there? Yes, I did. <laughs> uh, well, to finish up your, your breaking of the fourth wall, I mean, you know that these CW agents have to provide the go yeah. to the current game right. and what, right. what not. Anyways, back to topic here. I mean, we just ran through just about every every draft pro- prospect who has some information on them. That's right. Well, but what any CW league that might do some more trading other than XGW? Well, because I know XGW is very active when it comes to trading draft picks. Look, I hate to break the fourth wall once again. I, don't, I know I'm overusing this gag, but I will. Uh, you know, Butch Polbag may be on WrestleMania 2000, but why didn't you at least go for WWF SmackDown or WWF SmackDown 2? Just saying. Or, how about here comes the pain? <laughs> yeah, there you go. See, you're breaking the fourth wall. Ah, anyway. Well, I mean, that just, that just does about it for, for this CAW Draft Preview Special. I mean couple of final thoughts before we before we end it actually yeah i do if you see tammy on the street at least give her a dollar oh wow that's ridiculous I, I highly doubt that we'll ever see that anyways this that is it for us here thank you for listening to the xgw radio caw draft preview special for joshua i am hector diaz And I bid you all, como siempre, adios. See ya.